Hey guys, this is an interesting review here. Uh, we're going to talk about the recent Battle of Winterfeld. Uh, obviously you know me, this is my friend James Scott. He has his own YouTube channel. James has watched this show, I think, what, since the beginning? Uh, I came in in the end of season one. I actually hated the show when it was on initially on air, but uh, yeah, no, season two is when I started watching it. And I have barely watched this at all. I uh, watched the first few episodes, I read the first two books, I realized that fat bastard was going to drag this shit out, so I just decided to wait until everything came to its conclusion. It's probably the most patient I've ever been with anything. Decided so. to jump back in on one of the, the most anticipated... Oh, I did it with the Battle of the Bastards, too. I just heard, oh, it's going to be a really big battle on TV? Cool, I'll watch that. So I thought we could do a video just talking about the retrospective of what we thought with the episode from a person who has absolutely no idea what the fuck is going on to a person who does know what's going Don't on. Don't know what's going <laughs> on. So I guess, obviously, the first thing we should talk about a little bit is the lighting issue that everyone's been having, and I think you and I have basically basically come up with the the assumption that it wasn't just post but it's compression because crave like it's not coming directly from hbo like, like yeah, those who didn't watch it directly on hbo i think you can see the pixelation in basically anything other than hbo mm -hmm. oh like when the dead were about to hit the main line i noticed there's this kind of this distortion in the around the screen and i was like that's compression that is a that is a transfer issue well, I know the uh, the lighting was intentional too. Like the um, the the director of cinematography even said he wanted the most natural lighting possible mm -hmm. to make it feel more real. Didn't want to make it feel like a studio shot. So, yeah, I was just watching a video about it, uh, talking about how he well, like the natural moon l moon lighting, and then when the trench was on fire, it would kind of give this the symbol of hell. And then as the fire went down, then the moon would return. Uh, admittedly, yeah, it's very hard to shoot night naturally. It's I think. This is the most realistic version of it because of how dark it is. The only version I would say that is one of the best versions is Sicario. But that's because Roger Deakins can shoot anything. Probably had a little bit more budget for that too. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if the budget for, for this was. I don't know. It was like 15 million or something and for, for one episode. Yeah. yeah. No, that's pretty, pretty exceptional considering the amount of stunts, background, how 11 weeks of shooting outdoor stuff like keeping all the cast and everything warm working through the night that's hard <laughs> so definitely got to give these guys credit for doing a phenomenal job i think the darkness even kind of worked the like advantage sometimes especially the, the initial scene which i'm i know we're gonna get into with the uh, the dothraki just uh charging the line but, oh yeah it gave uh, that suspense like you yeah. had what's a, the director of this episode said that he <sighs> wanted to have that feeling of like not revealing the monster, yep. like giving that initial fear. Admittedly, yeah, it's uh, when the Dothraki go in and you don't, you see like a flash image of, it looked like a giant dead thing, and then you just see them being slaughtered. And that was really cool. I liked that. Now, apparently that meant something pretty big because they've never been defeated in an open battle or something. Yeah, no, the, the Dothraki have never been defeated in, in an open field because, well, horses, but uh, yeah. They're, they're, they're kind of the best on, on horseback. Um, I like the, I think the, the fire was almost used as a symbol of hope throughout the entire episode. So you have like the light <laughs> like, versus ah, dark. got it. <laughs> and they're like, the fire's gone. Oh boy. <laughs> this, this might not end well. There's something else that I saw a comment about is usually when cavalry hit a line, they like, the whole point of them is going through the ranks. And someone said either they didn't think about that or the dead's ranks were so deep that the horses just couldn't get through. They were just being stabbed yeah, yeah, as they were getting through. Another one little comment before everything gets started. These guys clearly never played Stronghold or any form of RTS because <laughs> I think the trench was the only smart idea of this entire battle setup. I, I, I didn't watch the previous episode. I don't know what they were doing for uh. planning, but... I don't know, man. Like all, all they were doing previously is they were getting the uh, the dragon glass and just sticking it on everything. They're like, oh, we're just gonna make a wall of black spikes to kill them with, I suppose. And the trench didn't even work that no, well. No, right? They screwed up the trench. Twenty people on top of a one little door. Mm. They used the catapults once. They never after the cavalry. Like, yeah, and then afterwards. and then they don't keep like firing at it. Like I know they don't know, but they kind of do know there's shit out there there's enough of them to be that deep 
Uh, they don't use any arrows. While like the guys they up on the wall, Theon. <laughs> yeah, Theon's the only one who's got arrows because all the dudes are up on the wall. Like, oh fuck, it looks real bad. We should probably do something. Yeah. <laughs> also, I was a little disappointed with the uh, Jorah Mormon. I don't know if you know who who that is. Is that the one who saves uh, uh, Sam? Uh, Daenerys. Oh, yeah. oh. He he goes in with the Dothraki. All the Dothraki, like, literally die. 100% of the Dothraki die. And he comes back to, you know, he's like, oh, man. Uh, no, well, I'm and, bailing. Well, supposedly, what happened to Ghost, too? Apparently, Ghost is going to be in the next episode only because of the preview. But, yeah. like, what happened to the dog? How'd the dog get out of that? Didn't have the budget. <laughs> Didn't have the who, budget. Who was in charge? Like, uh, like, was there a sad general? At first, I thought, oh, maybe it's Davos, or maybe it's Jamie, or maybe it's, what's his name? Because he charges in with him, and then... I know Brienne is, like, in charge of... Like a group of them, but mm -hmm. like it just was I, so poorly Grey coordinated. Worm. Grey Worm seemed like the only one who actually was like, "Yeah, okay, I'm gonna take reins in this shit." Yeah, he he probably had the control of of the largest group. And mm -hmm. what the the crab wall when they first hit the what the what are they the Forsworn or who, uh, who who are the why can't I remember what they're called the Unsullied? Yeah, yeah, the Unsullied. Yeah, when they like go over them like World War Z. I was like, oh shit, oh, they're so shit. fucked. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not gonna end well. I liked that. I liked how they really embedded that idea of fear and that real, that hopelessness. Like, I didn't even, I don't know who barely any of these characters are. I don't even know the stakes of it. And I was intent. I was like, whoa, this is intense. Well, I believe it's the same director that did, and I, I could be wrong on this, uh, Hard Home and The Battle, Battle of the, of the Bastards. Bastards. yes. And Oh, like if you watch, you've seen the Battle of the Bastards, like watching somebody drown underneath just bodies. Yeah, like just, the realism, oh. like sort of the, the realistic, like the absolute exhaustion of battle. Like I think someone told me at, at, at an a, a saying that imagine trying to chop wood nonstop for three hours yeah. and then you'd almost have an idea of how much they would be. You're not including like trying to defend yourself or being hit. But, but it's just permanently grueling. Yeah. Oh yeah, and and he captures that well, and and I think all of his all, all mm -hmm. three of the episodes because I was like floating above my seat probably oh, no. for the last. I mean, admittedly, minutes. like I think there's the amount of times that my brother and I just did this, <laughs> just sitting forward, and my dad kept on trying to say stuff. I'm like, shut up! <laughs> I had a little sticky note attached to to my wall saying, "Remember to breathe." Just <laughs> Oh, no, it, admittedly we did pause it. Like I think after the Dothraki got massacred. I did, like, all right, hang on. And we went up the brightness all the way on the TV. I think I messaged you before the episode yeah, started. Yeah, you like, did. Hey, that, make sure yeah, you when, turn up the brightness. Yeah, when you told me that, I was like, all right. Yeah. I was like, I wonder how bad it's like, oh, wow, I can't see shit. D digital compression's the real bad guy, not, mm -hmm. not the Night King. Not, yes, exactly. Not the, the lighting department. But, they, wow, this would have... They were talking about just how they had to find a way to make those spikes that could burn for multiple days without deteriorating because they needed to keep reshooting this whole pit on fire. They had like a five ton of gat of uh, lighting fluid on set almost all the time. And then like when, uh, what's it, when the, they attack the wall, when they're in the castle and they're fighting, there's special effects guys off to the side with these buckets, like <laughs> they're throwing debris and dirt and whatnot to just keep adding to that atmosphere. Yeah, I never thought about the technicality of how oh. much fuel you'd need, even just for like the little bit of the, the trench that catches mm -hmm. on fire for what, five minutes of footage? It, it was a 900 foot trench, so apparently. Yeah, they, they built at least like the front part of it, all the ones that are all the, the Unsullied are in front of, that's an actual trench. And one of the production guys even said, it's like, you know, in terms of trenches, this is a good trench. I've dug some trenches. <laughs> so I I did like how the, just the building, like this episode, the only time it ever gave you a time to breathe, I feel, was when Arya was having her own little horror story inside the castle. Yeah, like, we, even though it was intense, like the little sneaking around with uh, the, the library or the yeah. dining hall. Um, like that that was probably like the least intense scene which mm -hmm. in like Jurassic Park 1 that was the most intense scene <laughs> so well also like it went dead quiet like the most the, the best soundproofing job I've ever seen like I my house is horrible for soundproofing I want that kind of level of soundproofing from for wherever I live cuz there's a massive battle hundreds of people are dying outside you don't hear a fucking peep when she gets in there it's not even windy <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I. You can hear blood dripping, apparently. Oh, yeah. It's so quiet that you can hear blood drip. I was like, are you serious? That was my first. Aside from the like the bad battle tactics, that was my first like what? Ah, oh, whatever. She can teleport. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, that was really cool. I mean, yeah. I liked what she did. I liked. Apparently, she did a lot of her own stunt work in that. She apparently taught herself from the very beginning that Arya, the character, is left-handed. She's righty, so she taught herself. She's been insistent how, from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, and now she's ambidextrous. So that's why when they went into when they were fighting in like the Kyle's ways and everything, it was the stunt weapons guy was the one who gave the idea to have her have the staff split in two. That was a cool weapon. I, uh, I I expected more from that weapon, honestly, how much they like, foreshadowed it in previous episodes. Like, mm. it was very urgent that she gets this weapon only to... I, I think she just basically ended up giving it to her sister and said, go into the crypts, use this. Oh, and that too. Um, now, <laughs> yes, you, you, you apparently, when you... Uh, in the, the episode before, yeah. you were calling what was, was going like, to happen. The, the prior episode, I'm like, okay, so there's a necromancer coming to siege Winterfell, and we're putting all the people who can't fight in a, like a literal box of death? That'll work. That'll work <laughs> just, just, just fine. Now, admittedly, yeah, when they started rising, I was like, what is happening? Why are the dead people here? And they're like, oh, it's because the White Walkers are got this area effect, like this aura effect to bring up the dead. It was like, but... These people have been dead for decades! Like, how much of a threat? They should be bone! Some of them, yeah, like, probably over a hundred years dead. Like, how? how I like, didn't think a kid could just push it. Over. Well, some of my, my brother, or no, my dad said, Hey, where's Sean Bean's head? Please have him yapping on I someone. That. I genuinely <laughs> wanted a Sean Bean's head, and that's it. Just... <laughs> Is this the battle that people were kind of expecting? This, people basically, I think, thought this was the end. Like, the, they built up the Night King to be one of the big bads, so I think everyone thought that this was going to be, like, the last four episodes was fighting the Night King. Um, so, admittedly, I, I get why some people are disappointed that uh, that they killed him, but... Uh, well, I, at first I thought, is, is this the first time he's ever had a big battle? And my brother's like, well, there was that fight with Jon Snow. I was like, well, that was a skirmish, and Jon Snow was a twat in that yeah. fight. I did watch that episode, too. And I just watched the Battle of Hardhome. So, technically, this is the third major incursion of the Night King... Yeah. So my comment about him being like on the same win record of Voldemort doesn't hold true anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no, Hardhome was like they they went to fight him, but I don't think they knew really what to expect. You know, he just does that. You're like, oh, okay, maybe maybe we should leave and uh, reevaluate this because. Oh no, that was pretty. Like, I, admittedly, now having seen that happen in Hardhome, I can imagine that people waited three more seasons to see this this again. So that's there's some pacing. That's some really good pacing. Yeah. Well, that was basically three seasons of, like, after Hardhome, John was like, we need everyone. Like, we need, if he kills any of us, that's more for his army. So that kind of sparked an entire arc of, like, let's get everyone on board. Let's settle the petty squabbles. Um, which is why, like, I'm, like, I'd like to have seen the Night King maybe last a little bit longer, but I'm fine with, with Cersei being the big bad. Because it's always been about... Oh, the, 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 the petty throne. squabbles, the yeah, throne, the, the game, game of, of thrones, thrones, right? Oh, for sure. The show isn't called A Song of Ice and Fire for mm -hmm. what is apparently a, a reason now, so. <laughs> well, I guess the only thing I'm a little bit concerned or a little worried for now is that it's going to have, I hate to make this reference, um, the Batman v Superman um, sort of. Uh, comparison when Batman and I've Superman... never heard anyone make Batman versus Superman to Game of Thrones. That was a, that was a slap to my face, Jeremy. <laughs> well, it's when Batman and Superman fought, it was like okay, but then Batman goes off and fights goons later, and there's no threat, there's no real, there's no stake because we just saw him defeat the most powerful universe, a person in the universe. So, I, I guess the only thing that you have here is that the forces of the North are basically decimated. Is there anyone left? Um, I don't know how many of the Unsullied are left. The, the Dothraki are gone. Like they they lasted like was that, that twelve was, seconds. I so, that's literally <laughs> all that's, of them. That was it. all of I'm them. Pretty sure that's it. Holy shit! This is such a bad military plan. Uh, you yes. hold your cavalry. You don't send them in first. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. Yeah, no, like that, that, like like you said, that was just an awful strategy. These people have obviously never played a video game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, bar borrow your cousin's Xbox, guys. Well, like, like you would think that Jamie would have been like, hey, guys, so I've done a lot of battles. Like, I guess maybe he thought that since the Dothraki just decimated his forces, but they had a dragon with them. Yeah. So like, they 
I did like how the the who was controlling the storm? Like how did that happen? So I think the Night King controlled the storm, and uh, I had it, I didn't notice until my second watch through that. Um, I thought it was like the Night King's dragon fighting Daenerys, but there's a moment when Jon and Daenerys yeah, they, are they crash, crash in, right? Which kind of ties into like the dark cinematography of it all. Mm-hmm. Like, like it, even confusing. they're in the dark. Well, they were supposed to light the trenches. Yeah, right? and yeah. Uh, also, what did they do this entire episode? Like Jon and Daenerys could have they, they could have stayed on the hill. Well, honestly. What were they doing actually? Well, well, they were supposed were to light the, the trenches, hill? and they were supposed to. That I, that was I, what they were supposed was, to it, do. Wow. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> didn't really say what they were supposed to do. I guess you obviously you have so much to try and compress into an hour yeah. and 30 minutes. And there's so much happening. Oh, I will say for deaths, I thought a lot more people would die. Like, obviously a lot of people did die. A lot of people are I mean, upset with the deaths. They wanted their favorites to die. And well, it, it was a little too Hollywood for them, I guess. You know? Yeah, well, I guess like how... how If they've survived this, how are they going to survive... Uh, sorry, how will they... What's the justification for them to die later on? I mean, there's 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 some big fights that still need to happen. There's the prophecy about Cersei being killed by one of her brothers. Um, that, prophecy. That, there's there's an old prophecy about how Cersei will watch all of her children die before her. Um, she's pregnant now, so we might watch one of her brothers stab her in the stomach. One. Wait, she has more than. Uh, Tyrion children. and Jaime. Oh yeah. yeah. Wow. Jaime's not just her lover. <laughs> No, I forgot. I forgot about Tyrion. Oh, okay. that was yeah. why I was, I was. I was like, "Wow!" I think I'm probably just pissed off like yeah. so many Thrones people right now. <laughs> oh, they they all kind of wish that Tyrion wasn't you know part of the the family anyways. Well, so. yeah, that was when he's saying like I could be up there doing something. Yeah, you could have planned this defense better. Well, because that's why the black. Oh, I saw the Battle of Blackwater too. I've seen basically all the big fights of this show. It seems Blackwater was so good. Oh, yeah. I, in the I remember reading that part in the book and being like, "This would be so visually cool to see on screen." And it was a smaller version of it for sure. They got the when the it was very was, intimate in how they filmed it. Like this was like almost a Hollywood style fight, mm-hmm. uh, even hard to extent. But like, I will always love Blackwater because it was just about the small little stories in a battle. And, oh yeah, uh, watching Tyrion use his his wit and his intelligence. Mm-hmm. It would have been nice to see it here, but I'm not... I don't know if he could have been that much help, honestly. He would have probably been like, hey, let's not send the cavalry in first. Well, that's why... I, I, I remember in the book, they were building up... He was basically working on the defense for like a hundred pages, just talking about battlements and whatnot, yeah. and having them be prepared. So that's why when I saw this, it's like... <laughs> like in, in, so in the defense of everyone else, like... The, the past, I don't know, few seasons, every decision Tyrion has made has been stupid. Oh, really? Like, yes, everything he's done has has cost them lives every oh. single time. Um, even he was saying, like, oh, yeah, Cersei's actually going to come and help us fight this war. Like, she said she's sending troops. I believe her because she's pregnant. And then when Jaime comes up, he's like, mm, no. And he's like, really? So Tyrion's um, lost a bit of his, his edge. Okay, I, I can understand that then. That makes sense then. Um, and in the previous episode, Daenerys even says, like, Yes, you are the smartest person we have. Like, you, you could be very helpful on the battlefield. But when we win this, we need you for Cersei. Like, we need you when it comes to fighting your sister. Oh, uh, that's, so that's why they put him in the bunker. Like, yeah, Daenerys has been thinking of the big picture. She wants the throne. Like, this is an important fight, but she, she wants the throne. And she's going to need Tyrion's intelligence to siege his home, mm, essentially, true. right? So, do you think that she has one dragon still left to do so, or two? I think they showed the second one in the next week, and I don't remember. Um, I'll, why I would hope it, it was. Why was the dragon also. hanging there? Why did it like not lift away? Like, yeah. Again, there's there's a few. Obviously, yes, there are a few parts that are like, well, that was kind of dumb. Um, I found it funny though. I did make a horrible joke at one point. It looked like Cersei put what's his name, her bestie, in front of her to get stabbed. Oh, uh, Daenerys, when she put... Jen. Yeah, it looks like he's just like... <laughs> he's yeah. just like, you bitch! Oh. She, she literally did do that. Like, I don't, I don't even think it, it was looks a joke. Like, like she it, it moves tol- him. It totally looks out. like she threw him in the way of And it. then just crying, like, oh, you're dying. It's like, I have been nothing but a bullet sponge for you for the past eight seasons, Dan. Those who <laughs> live in the friend zone die in the friend zone. <laughs> oh, man. That, I felt bad for him. I felt really oh. bad for him. Um, I, he seemed like the biggest death like i i the little girl they're they're related to their cousins right so oh. yeah so that's that's the end of the mormon line the oh uh liana mormon like that was such a good kill good Just, good yeah. way for her like that little girl to go out well like, the oh. previous episode everyone was like 
no, you're staying in the crypts. No, you're staying in the crypts. She's like, no. Like, I will uh, die for my people. You're staying in the crypts. You're a kid. And she's like, you can't make I me. I did get a flash full, like, like a like a cliff note run through of season seven. And apparent, I, I did see her scene. And I thought, wow, for a little girl, she really holds her own in terms of just an actor. Yeah. So I thought she was pretty good. And that sucked for her. Yeah, I, uh, there was an interview and somebody's like, so what are you going to miss most about playing, you know, uh, your, your character? And she's like, oh, just sitting in front of a room of grown men and humiliating them. So that's she just does it over and over girl. and over. That's like, awesome. I love that. I, I really like casting. that character. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So now that this battle has, conspi- like, has conspired and like it's come to a conclusion, what's the, just it's just the throne now? That's what's left? That's it. And I mean, there's there's certain things that like need to happen so you've got the relationship between the hound and the mountain cl- cl- game yeah. bowl that we've all been waiting for um we all just want to watch the hound throw the mountain into a fire just because oh, for like for revenge, revenge right like yeah, his, his, his burn his face that, that was such a touching moment too in in this episode when he just wussed out he's like i can't do this there's too much fire yeah. and then he sees like Arya, and he's like no for her, like, I'll, I'll deal with the fire. Yeah, we, no, we, I, we, I even said that to my brother, too. I was like, are you serious? He still hasn't gotten over this shit? This happened in the second book. Like, he went from being one of my favorite characters to one of... I, 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 I lost I lost him a lot of... Not respect, but I was... Like, obviously, yeah, this PTSD for being burned. But he just went, like, completely clamfish. And just didn't do anything in the Battle of Blackwater. So I was like, ah, and well, I've already lost my other favorite character, which was Littlefinger. I'm not happy about that. That was terrible. That was bad writing. I'll, I'll say that. That yeah. was, that was... I, I want him to die, and I'm happy with how he died, but I'm going to give it to you. That was that was a bad scene where you're just like, this is cheese. Like, I was like, oh, begging you. It's like, I guess he would beg in the end, but I just how he... I wanted to see him this episode. Like, I really wanted to see him come up and have, like, Arya have to kill him again. Yeah. Or, like, oh, yeah, that would have been cool. Right? But or, or Sansa killed him in the crypts or something like that. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, oh, that I actually thought that was kind of a touching moment, too, when Tyrion and Sansa, like, you think that they're going to yeah. die. And just, what she says, like, we should have stayed married. You were the <laughs> best of them. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, was, that line hit, like, real close to home after everything she's been through, because... He was like he he was very nice to her, and she was just kind of mean to him. And to to see that kind of come full circle, like we were good. Like oh well, to be honest, I've actually never thought that the girl who plays Sansa is a very good actress, like Sophie Grace. Like apparently she's gotten a little bit better, yeah. but especially oh. after her, I'm not looking forward to Dark Phoenix because of her. I mean, we could take a second to talk about the Dark Phoenix trailer. <laughs> Dark garbage. <laughs> <laughs> that movie looks awful. Oh, it looks so bad. Oh, so bad. It's a shame. Like, yeah. Uh, but, uh, oh, and another character that got his, uh, well, his full circle was Theon, right? Yeah, and... that's my boy. I, I could I could talk years about Theon, because that, that's a tragic story. Like, he, Oh, yeah. He was a, a pretentious, whiny little spoiled brat who was part of a family that he didn't really belong in, didn't ever know where he, he belonged, and then thought he did, turned against where he actually belonged, only to come back full circle, have... A kid he thought he killed be like, "Hey, I forgive you, and oh, that's pretty you're, cool. you're a good man." Uh, yeah, no, I like that. Oh, I will. I do have one big question: Where the hell did Bran go? That like, needs to come back in the next three episodes. Yeah, like he, that. He, has like, to he was matter. in the crows, and he flew over the battle and everything. And so, well, I'm hoping he went south because I think at some point he's like, "Okay, we win." Let's start looking at the next fight. Let's go see what Cersei's doing. Let's make sure that there's no traps being set up. Because, honestly, if if Bran didn't do anything this episode, I'm going to like this episode less if, if that doesn't... Yeah, because he even said, like, I have to go now. And I was like, where's he going? Where, where, where'd he go? What, what? <laughs> and apparently, but apparently this was his idea to use himself as bait. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because the Night King always knows where he is. They, they, the Night King touched him in like a flashback, uh, and now the Night King will always know where he is. Oh, that's when he killed Max von Sydow, right? <laughs> yeah, Max yes, von Sydow. Yes, I watched that. I remember I, I hated Bran. Bran got so many people killed in that one. He got the little people killed. He got his dog killed. He got Hodor killed. Yeah. He got Max von Sydow killed. No, I, I have to admit, like that's probably now that well, when I have uh, time, I'll have the time now to uh, watch it because that's honestly the, the thing I'm most interested in what on earth the fucking Three-Eyed Raven thing is like so the Three-Eyed Raven and the Night King I they're probably gonna explain way more in the books but 
they, they don't really do the best idea of a explaining who the night king is and b mm. what the relationship is with the three-eyed raven i've got my own speculation as to i mean if you turn somebody who can see like the past and the present and warg into things like, be a god yeah if, if you can turn him into one of your army your zombies like you're a god of like you you win you just took westeros and estos and it's over mm-hmm. um, um oh i guess that's something that to kind of uh talk about do you think the book will go this way no i think the you, book I will think he'll just die before he finishes it no no i don't, I don't <laughs> think i think uh, he I, we made the joke that he, he he doesn't he's like oh fuck i don't know how to end this quick diabetes take me well i, I heard a rumor that it's um it's coming out at the same time as half-life 3 so i've I, I got my fingers uh if, if neither of them dies <laughs> first but no um like, so George R. R. Martin has spoiled the ending for the showrunners, mm-hmm. and he's already said he's not going to let what the showrunners do change oh. how he writes the book. Oh, of course. Which yeah. is kudos to him, like, I, if you I, did, you're a bad wait, writer. Well, well, especially, well, what's the point of continuing your product if you're about to just have the whole thing spoiled for you by a television yeah. show? There's no way they're going to end the same way. Like, they're going to th- go completely different. I think as far as details go, he was probably like, oh yeah, like, John is actually an heir to the throne, that theory is correct, and the Night King will die and the final battle is with Cersei. Like, I have a feeling like that's really all he's told the showrunners, because mm. to be like, oh yeah, Lyanna Mormont's going to die stabbing a giant in the... I don't think he went to like, that much detail, Oh, for right? sure. Um, that's what a lot of people talked about. There was like, The spectacle of Season 7 was really fun, but in the grand scheme of it, there were some some very odd choices, narratively-wise. Yeah. It, it's basically been like that after they've stopped following the book. It's like, okay, it shows that you guys aren't as good of a writer as George R. R. Martin. Mm-hmm. Um, no. You don't know how to develop your characters going forward and... Fortunately, Arya, I think, is one of the ones that the showrunners actually understood how to develop. Yeah, no, I'll ahead. admit, I just from what I remember of season one and season two, or, sorry, book one, book two, and then seeing her at this point, like, I'm very excited to see how she got there. Yeah. Like I said, I, I just wanted to wait until all this was over and so I could just grand scheme it. So. I'd like to do another one of these with you after you've, like, watched all of Game of Thrones. Just, just be like, like oh, let's talk about how bad it actually is. There's so much there. I'm going to take a sip of the tea. Uh, I uh, I did like X. One something I did enjoy um, significantly about how uh, the episode played out was um, uh, wait, where did I go? I totally. Where was I going with that? <laughs> just branding Wargy, <laughs> just some crows for a second there. Um, I kind of liked just that constant feeling of dread throughout the whole i i thought they were done the whole time i did not think they would win i i like that it gave me that i haven't had that i've been watching supernatural for the last oh dude this was such a rough season you, you and, you've known that the the winchesters are going to win since i guess like season three like oh, after season three the stakes well, were just not yeah like even like but there was some i think swan song still gave me like a <gasps> yeah kind of moment but i haven't had this feeling of dread and unknown certainty for characters in a long time. That's kind of why I wanted to watch it. When I hear all these people like, oh, my favorite characters are dying. It's like, oh, really? And I, I think that, that actually speaks kinda cool. to the showrunners. Like, you, as somebody who doesn't watch it, were anxious about who Ooh. was going to win. Like, yeah. you, you were able to watch it. Well, no, and the reason why I haven't watched it like normal people is because my dad spoiled it all for me. Like, he spoiled Sean Bean. He spoiled The Red Wedding. Spoiled everything. Serves you right. You spoiled the end of season three of Supernatural for me. <laughs> I did? I don't know if you remember that, but yeah, you did. Oh, I did? In, in oh. our writing class, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I feel so horrible now. Oh, I'm so... I'm a, I'm a, I'm a horrible... It's okay. I, I, I ruined uh, Lost for my sister, and that was her favorite show, so... Oh. It's just a circle of spoilers. Oh, shit. Now my sister's gonna ruin something for your dad. <laughs> Bre- breaking circle. Bad, I don't know. In terms of uh, an episode for a person who hadn't watched this before, I very much enjoyed it. I thought it was very very fun and that's got to say something for someone who doesn't know like just from a production standpoint that's why i wanted to watch it because i'm always always down for medieval warfare scenes because they're fucking hard to shoot but if they're they're done right yeah if they're done right they're they come off great and this they i love the little the little cut ins of the 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 dead when they were just over like there was such quick editing when they first crash into the Unsullied, that it just, I was terrified. 
then and that's and the, again for someone who hasn't watched it that's pretty good when you can give that sense of dread to someone and that sense of like being confused in the fight i think matters like all these people fighting they don't know who's living and who's dying mm -hmm. as the audience we should feel like that as well oh yeah and how did you feel with oh guess one last thing uh, how did you feel with the ending with Arya taking down the night king I am, I'm gonna be in the camp that liked it. I, oh, I, I thought it was cool. I was like, woo! I've been, I've been an Arya fan since day one. She's she's my number one, my go-to. No. And even if the books don't have her killing the Night King, like, I was... It was awesome. I've got my theories as to how she got away with it. Yeah, actually, explain that, though. Like, explain the, the face like the, the face thing you had. So, yeah, Arya is able to, you know, she, she was a faceless assassin. She can kill people where their face is. And if you actually go back and watch the scene as the, like, the undead are moving out of the way of the Night King... Uh, there's one that's not acting like the rest of them. I think Arya managed to just wear the face of an undead and use that to sneak in and uh, get the kill. That's a pretty cool way to do it. I yeah. meant when the White Walker, when his hair was like... I, I, my brother, just blowing my, his ear. My, my brother was like, and I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> and then I forgot it. Oh yeah, she's an assassin. Yeah. Um, no, I, I've never... Like, that's... I mean, there, there's better episodes, I think, but there has never been an episode of Game of Thrones or even a movie within, like, the course of 10 seconds where I've screamed, I've cried, I've cheered. Like, I was jumping on my seat because I couldn't I couldn't handle if Arya died there. Yeah. And to just, like, genuinely, like, scream in my house, yes, like... I'll, I will admit, this gave me the same amount of woo as a certain element that happened in Endgame. I'm not going to reveal that <laughs> I, here, but there was a part in Endgame that I, like did the same yeah. thing right, as when she killed the Night King. You start applauding a screen and you you don't really know why, but you're like, yes, this is awesome. Oh, yeah, no, that was really, really cool. I like that. Oh, I guess one other question. Is that it? Is that all of the, like, all of the White Walkers are gone? As far as I know? Like in... So it's a Phantom Menace. Yep. Well, it... Isn't is, isn't he actually Darth Maul? I thought <laughs> yeah, cool, yeah, because of his head, right? Yeah, it was it was a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. But I'm I'm pretty sure it's, that is Darth Maul, just without the robot legs. Uh, he just got real cool. <laughs> yeah, just oh. oh yeah. Apparently, fire doesn't work on ice cube people. So yeah, that too. So that is the idea that maybe he might be a Targaryen. Yeah, or something. I I don't believe that theory, but he has blue eyes, so who knows? Yeah, I I don't know. I I think that was just. They wanted, like, a, they wanted a more intimate personal kill than just like a bunch of fire. Oh yeah, no, it was even like the the, the timer, right? When you're seeing it, it's like oh, it's, too, it's too early. A little early, yeah. Well, and then when Jon Snow chased after him, and he's just like, "Hey, I got buddies," <laughs> and he's like, he's trying to get to him. And I thought that might have been the kill. I thought like, so too. I thought they were gonna like have a con they were gonna like you know I thought oh maybe he's gonna make it. He's gonna like just make it. In oh no, he's not. Yeah, I because <laughs> when that happened, I was like, this is probably the end of Jon and the Night King. Um, yeah, no, that would have been really interesting. Yeah. I the last joke that I have seen that's probably one of my favorite ones though is the night king they said that the night king blew a 60 to 0 lead <laughs> like the 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 was it the aliens in space jam didn't lose as hard as the night king did <laughs> i'm still struggling to figure out how he lost but he just tunnel visioned he he just wanted one thing and didn't yeah. try, like and um, and you think that they have, were having a conversation in yeah the there's 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 that moment when they just stare at each other and there's that really knowingly uh, yeah i part of me thinks that Brand might have been like, "Hey, you die here. This is it. You you lose." And I, I I don't know. It just it was a prolonged scene with fantastic music. Oh yeah. Speaking of which, I don't I cannot pronounce his name correctly, so I'm not gonna say. I'm just gonna probably put it right here. Uh, he has done a lot of music for Westworld, and when his when the music started, that long like that him walking into the courtyard and everything. My dad said it before I did. He said that sounds like Westworld music. And when we looked it up, it, it is. It's the same composer who does all the music for Westworld. So, yeah, I don't know if this guy's done any... I would love to see this guy do, like, film music. I don't know if he has done major movies, but he he's should. He's Because he's goddamn good. Yeah. He is... I love that use. It's the idea of, like, combining Westworld and Game of Thrones music together. And that was really cool. I did enjoy that. Well, I thank you for this. Uh, yeah, James. No, I, I really <laughs> did appreciate it. Like, as the episode was going, any time there was like a small break, I'd be like, I really want to talk about this with you. <laughs> so, I have no idea what's going on either. <laughs> oh, and I think that was really cool. I did like this. It's It was 
I love the discussions that these things do. Like, same for Endgame. Like, when my roommate here saw it, talked to him for, like, three hours about the movie. And I love to have these. Even when, like, again, when you don't... If you can have a conversation like this with someone who doesn't watch the show, to, with someone who does, that's always a good thing. That's always a sign of a good show. Yes, I think it speaks volumes for, mm -hmm. for the quality. Even though half the internet hates it, but... Uh, well, like I said, digital compression. That's yeah. the real bitch. <laughs> yeah, who cares about the internet? Now, with the final three episodes, do you think it's going to <laughs> live up to expectations? No. No? <laughs> I don't think there's any way it can. Um, yeah, it's very... That's admittedly, it's eight years of yeah, building up to something. I'm, I'm trying to think of such grandiose shows that have that have lived up to expectations. And, I uh, guess, I mean, like... I think X Files was a letdown. Lost was a letdown. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and with Game of right. Thrones not having the books to go off of, like, I, I think people are going to be content and they're going to get what they wanted out of it. Yeah. But if people, I think people are already let down at this point. Yeah, I noticed. Um, There's some people who are just, like, I understand some criticism. Like, obviously, you have to have some criticism for some shows, and you have to be willing to accept that. Supernatural fans, um, but the. I found there's this one guy, Geeks and Gamers. I don't know if you've ever seen his channel. This is also named Jeremy. Um, he was, when there was that whole Last Jedi kind of fuel thing, like he got really popular off of that for pointing out some obvious issues with the movie. But I noticed that the instant, the instant the episode came out, he already had an incredibly negative a perspective of the episode. I, it just appeared in my feed and I watched it for like two minutes and he's just calling it a garbage episode. I was like, no, dude. You, you don't trash this much hard work. Like, this is not... Maybe it's not a. a going... It's not the episode that was in your head. Like no, that, that's yeah. that's your only they, complaint, yeah. honestly. Yeah, it's... there's some bad military decisions for sure. There's some odd expectations, subverting expectations with certain characters. There's not enough character deaths. Um, but that's that's a terrible complaint that I've yeah, seen a lot. But like... That's that's not a reason to call this garbage because this is a fucking hard episode. Some of the best TV ever ever mm -hmm. made, honestly. In terms of just absolute fantastic work from a production standpoint i've seen some hard like i've i've seen some of the special effects stuff done for man in the high castle and it's hard it's very hard work so to see it on a level that's the ep, the the fucking money for this episode alone was more than two three episodes i think of man in the high castle so and it's, it's one location, damn it. it. They didn't have to go anywhere, except for some studio stuff, obviously. Yeah. But that's hard. Like, that's not an easy thing to do. So Guff, definitely give credit where credit is due. Apparently, he directs the fifth episode. The oh, Europe yes. I, I forgot there was one more episode he was doing. So maybe that might be a fight, too. Yeah. I, I think we're going to get a couple of, like, we're going to get another, you know, episode four will be building up and marching south. Mm. Episode five will be the battle yeah. uh, with a cliffhanger. Six will be, let's wrap it up quick. Oh, it's kind of like a, the end of Band of Brothers, where the ninth episode is like the last conflict, and then ten is all of them just like, where do they go from yeah. here? Yeah, because they have to. Yeah, they they do have to. I, I think the the throne the is going to be destroyed. I don't think there's going to be a throne to sit on for anyone. Ooh, uh, prediction here. Yeah, well, I guess we can just wrap up on that as his uh, yeah. prediction here. Because that, that's a cool idea. Uh, there's there's this dream that Daenerys had um, a vision uh, several seasons ago, season two. Where she walks oh. into the throne room and there's snow or ash. So initially people thought it was snow because winter was coming. But after, um, like, they've been using the, the, I can't remember, wildfire. The green fire that they used uh, in season two. They've used it several times. Yeah. I think Cersei is willing to blow up everything to prevent anyone from getting that throne. Wow. So I think well, King's she, Landing... She did it once. She already killed... Didn't she sacrifice one of her kids to do it too? Or uh, Yep. So... This woman well, is willing. Well, she didn't sacrifice her kid. Her kid killed herself as a result. But, oh. Yeah, did the uh, the Michael Fassbender out of a window. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, is, is, is that Assassin's that Creed is reference? Assassin's Holy <laughs> shit. That's so obscure. I haven't, seen, I haven't uh, thought about that movie in so long. Uh, oh, my God. Wow, that's a cool idea. Now that makes me kind of regret, like, like really skimming through her stuff in the second book. I thought Daenerys was so boring in the second book. She is. She, I, when like She's, every everyone's like, well, there's a vision that matters. Who gives a shit? I don't want to have to find the vision on one paragraph amongst like hundreds of pages of boredom. No, that vision's gonna come back. She's gonna be walking in the throne room. Everything's gonna be destroyed. But uh, I, I think it'll it'll be her being like, this is this land of ash is mine. Let's let's rebuild it. 
That's um, a cool idea. With, with Jon Snow, and uh, there's going to be alliances, and it's going to be a happy Hollywood ending. And uh, when you <laughs> do that in Game of Thrones, people don't want to be happy. No, because so. there, there is, I don't know, like there's this idea that there's been so much depression, there's been so much like loss throughout all these characters that what it, is it going to be a bad thing to have them have a happy ending or people just like no this that the reason why they've liked this show is because it doesn't play along the rules i think tv needs a happy ending versus like a book you could have it end terribly honestly and i think mm-hmm. it'd be it'd be fine um yeah, yeah. but excited for clegane bowl so that's that's really all i've been watching the show for for the past eight seasons is to watch two giant brothers just duke it out and isn't he a zombie now or something i want that's what i wanted so badly is the night king to take him over and make him so he could only be killed with fire that's what i wanted because oh. to have oh to have the hound have to use fire to there's definitely well, there will definitely be a fire reference like yeah. this is probably the time then the hound's actually finally gonna use wildfire to kill him well yeah like get over fire yeah because I, I thought he would have gotten over by now because that was like six seasons jesus <laughs> No, he, he's been afraid of it his entire life. Yeah, well, yeah. I guess that's... Older brothers. Development. And we'll see what happens. Anyways, though, James, this was really fun. I really yeah. enjoyed this. And, Had a blast. Yeah, yeah. no. And uh, maybe we'll do some more in the future, for sure. I'd yeah. love to, like... <laughs> Watch all of it, and then, then hit me up. Oh, yeah. Well, anyways, all right. Thanks, guys, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A little bit of a little rant. Kind of interesting ramble, but... Again, I like the idea of just two people. One person who is a fan of the show, and one who had absolutely no idea what was happening so anyways i guess until next time we'll see you guys later bye thanks for watching the video you're probably wondering who i am my name is nitz and you might remember me from the animated cult classic tv show undergrads it's been a while but i'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie thanks to a successful kickstarter campaign but we are still asking for your support you know nitz you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors yeah guy Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well, couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural. Or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy. Get in with the ladies, guy. Hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy. You're a massive slug thing, guy. <sighs> To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.